Hello and welcome to a quick update video. This video is intended for people who started studying before May and who plan to take the exam sometime before the fall. So if you just started studying, I recommend that you skip this video and get back to your studies. But if not, this video should give you an idea of what really changed in the May 2021 revision. So what you're looking at on the screen here is the official common body of knowledge outline that I purchased from ISC Squared. It's the self-paced training and basically what all authors and official content producers use to create their own materials. It's basically the single source of truth of the common body of knowledge. So I've gone through the entire thing and all I can say is fasten your seatbelts because <laughs> it was a real eye-opener for me. So before I show you what changes actually have been made, I need to kind of make a distinction here. So the exam allocation change this thing here showing the percentages this all this is is what percent you'll be tested on the exam it has nothing to do with how much content is actually in the common body of knowledge so keep that in mind it basically means you'll get you know 15 questions out of 100 on security risk management or 10 on asset security potentially that's all that this means is that that's the that's the amount that you're going to be tested on and it's of course this one on the right here the exam outline itself should, in theory, kind of hint at what subjects appear on the exam. Uh, not this one, but the exam outline, which is what I did, which is what I covered in a different video. This thing here on the right and on the left, the previous one on the left, the new one here on the right. The exam outline should, in theory, hint at what subjects appear in the exam. But based on my own experience and what some of you have told me, the outline is completely useless as a study guide. Because the truth is that anything, and by anything I mean everything in the common body of knowledge is testable. Everything and anything in the common body of knowledge could appear on the exam. So with that, let me just give you a brief overview of how much stuff was added into the common body of knowledge in the May revision. So, like I said, I've gone through the whole thing and there was very little removed. Okay, so look here. We have some just random garbage here. So uh, Privacy Shield was removed. That's from Domain 1, and uh, I believe that it, it said something about that being kind of an inefficient program. So that was taken out. And then we have some cryptography terms here, like confusion and diffusion. Uh, I didn't see Avalanche covered. It might still appear, if you, if you know what that is. Uh, key clustering, I think they're calling it clumping now, I don't remember. Synchronous and asynchronous uh, in the in the context of cryptography. I know that appears also in domain four. Um, I don't remember double des or meet in the middle being mentioned. Um, so then we have in terms of VoIP, we have things like packet loss and jitter being removed, uh, sequencing errors as well in the context of VoIP. Uh, this term here, I know some of you had questions for me about what this was, privilege manager. It looks like they took that out. And then we also have this stuff in domain seven, overt, covert, white hat testing, black hat testing, white box, black box, gray box, and all that stuff. And then this weird little oddity of the information life cycle that was in domain seven, all that stuff has been removed. So that will be removed from our questions as well. It's going to take a little while. Let's go back to this overview here. So let me just kind of show you the, the sheer volume of new stuff. Uh, so domain one, not too bad. I mean, they have, we have some of these new concepts like data portability and localization. Uh, GDPR was there, privacy, and we have this new e-discovery component of it. Um, then we have some new concepts down here, new disclosure agreements that we need to get familiar with. Uh, and then it goes down right into into domain two so the funny thing though here is that if you remember in the actual the actual exam outline they say that one of their new topics that you're going to be tested on is gamification right but there's literally one sentence about gamification in all their new common body of knowledge content so i thought that was kind of amusing so getting into domain two not too much was added there, there's definitely uh some some new concepts in here that, that are going to be interesting, like pervasive encryption. 
uh, media media marking. I don't actually know if that's. It seems like that was tagging and and labeling before, but maybe they call it marking now. Maybe that was there before. I don't know. I'll have to go back and double check because some of this is starting to ring a bell. Uh, okay, then we have the stuff that was removed here. Des and AES was kind of reduced. It's still there. Getting into domain three, we have a ton of new stuff here. Some of the stuff might have been alluded to, but uh, we have things like the hypervisor types. We have uh, microservices. A lot of us already know what that is, but they go into detail about what they think it is. Um, serverless systems, again, but this is another example that was kind of amusing to me. They, in, in their outline, they talk about serverless. Serverless, you're gonna be, that's the exam outline, right? You're gonna be tested on that, supposedly, and they've got one paragraph on it. Some completely new concepts here, like edge and fog computing architectures. So uh, that should be an interesting study. Uh, there's quite a bit more on quantum cryptography. I believe last time there was just one paragraph and it was a small paragraph. The hash has been updated probably to cover the past the hash. Uh, oh, here it is, uh, past the hash. Again, they just have one sentence on past the, past the hash and that's supposedly something that's gonna be testable. Uh, and it, I mean, it's just funny to me because in these, in the exam outline, I mean, you would expect this to be a major topic, right? But it doesn't appear that way. Getting into domain four, we have things like LiFi, uh, bound net, and unbound networks. Just some more terms here to be familiar with. Uh, there's there's quite a bit as so we keep going down the list here. You know, ARP was updated, uh, but there's a lot of new stuff here. Arbitration, deconfliction, pulling protocols. Um, they updated their tables showing the layer two threats and countermeasures. So my mnemonics on that are just completely useless now. Lots of new content here. All these threats and countermeasure tables are, are new. Um, well, I wouldn't say new, they've been updated. So my mnemonics might still be useful. I'll have to go in and do a thorough review of all of them just to make sure that something doesn't need to be removed or whatever. So see, the list keeps going. Here we go, now we're finally at domain five. So once again, privilege manager removed, but we have, I believe when I was reviewing domain five, it seemed like everything was new. It just, it was like a complete dump of the old and just a lot of new stuff in here. So we have, I mean, look at this, just a ton of new stuff. I mean, I can't even begin to explain what some of the stuff is just, I mean, we know what privilege escalation is, but it, this is in the context of, of somebody who already has authorized access permission aggregation, and they've rolled these security models. I was hoping that those would go away. I just, I can't stand the Biba and the Bell Lapida stuff. I just think it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, I've never heard that used in my career. Has anybody? Honestly, I don't know. They've got this thing, the strong star property. Uh, that was probably already there, but I know they have the star property. I don't know about the strong star property. They have this new thing, the reback risk-based access control, dual custody. Anyway, the list goes on and on. One thing that I was hoping again would be removed was this garbage about um, in domain one, the whole the risk assessment methodology, but unfortunately it's still there. You know, the ALE and the, the ARO and all that. I've never, I've never seen that used in my career as well. Nobody does that. That just, it's so basic and seems obsolete to me because <clears throat> every organization tends to have their own method of doing a risk assessment. Nobody does that version that's in the CISSP common body of knowledge. So continuing down the biometrics. Oh yeah. So here they reduced all the, the long list of the retina scans and the fingerprint scans and describing, they had long descriptions. I remember, um, and then the, the, paragraph about vein patterns in your palm and how those are the most reliable. We've got these other terms. I mean, just look at this, look how big this list is. It's just ridiculous how much new stuff is. And they're, they're not going to tell you this. They never told anybody. You have to buy their material to, to really see that this is the case. So now getting into domain six, another, again, domain six was kind of the same thing as domain five. As I was going through it, it just all seemed new to me, new content. I mean, some of these frameworks we're familiar with, but we didn't get into the details. And I think they get into a little bit more detail this time. On and on and on, here it goes. See, we've got all these new concepts, uh, some were updated. See, we're in the 200s now. All right, so domain seven, security operations. We have these things that were removed, but then uh, they changed and they updated and combined some things. Penetration testing is now, what is it? Ethical penetration testing. They've got the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Some of you are familiar with that. Um, so change management before it was configuration management. 
Um, if, if anybody wants, I can make this list available. I don't think it will be helpful. The whole purpose of doing this is to just kind of alert everyone to the fact that here are the changes you're, you're facing. If you thought you could just kind of, you know, wait for the new book or whatever, and then just you've been studying and, and you want to just kind of read up a little bit before you take the exam, I don't recommend doing that. I recommend kind of starting over with the new material because there is a lot of new material. Incident management, I had a nice little mnemonic that I had invented for that one, and that's completely useless now because they've changed it to incident response. And uh, they have some elements of that in there combined, but it's more of an incident response. And then they, they kind of commingle the two terms here and there, but, but the acronym doesn't work anymore. So that's one thing I'll have to remove. Let's see. And then we got a whole bunch on forensics and then this new SOAR thing. So, so again, when I went through this material, it was really just trying to look for new things because I, you know, I've got a lot of stuff, useful stuff out there and not a whole lot was removed. So everything that's currently out there, your, your books from 2018 are still valid, but a lot of stuff will be added. So that's why I'm saying, make sure that you just kind of start from scratch. I don't recommend leveraging what you've been studying. Um, oh, so much new stuff. It's just, it's just insane. So, uh, and, and when I put something here, this basically means that there's at least a paragraph on it. Uh, a lot of these have like a page and a half to two pages worth of material. And so if you're looking at here in the three hundreds, I mean, you can do the math, right? A lot, a lot of new concepts here. We haven't even gotten to domain eight yet. So now we're in domain eight and we have all of this stuff to memorize new terms, completely new terms. And domain eight was already huge. And again, the allocation just means that's how many questions you're going to get. Domain eight was more than, I think it was more than 200 pages in the old book, the official student guide. And, and this module, when I was going through it, it took me about 11 hours to get through their training materials for domain eight. And I, I'm completely honest, watching the, the painful videos, reading the text pages, uh, it was just, it took about 11 hours. Here we go. <laughs> Something funny here. Maybe not that funny, but I went through everything and I noticed that, you know, these things that they said were going to be on the exam outline, this thing called Zigbee and VXLAN, they were actually not in their official common body of knowledge. I couldn't find them. So that's research that you'll have to do on your own, unfortunately, and that I'll have to do on my own as well. I'm just going to have to make assumptions as far as what ISC squared thinks is important about these things, which I know nothing about. So there you have it. Um, bottom line, and I'll, you know, I'll try to ed edit this video to make sure that it's not wasting anybody's time. But the bottom line is that if you've been studying, I recommend starting from scratch, you either go with the official self-paced guide by ISC squared, or you buy one of the new books and just go from there. The official training, you'll have to leverage your employer's fi financing and funding. For that, it's it's over it's eight hundred dollars. It's more than eight hundred dollars. So if you don't have the money to spend on that, wait for the new book by Warzynski or uh, David Seidel. I think is his name. But I do recommend the Warzynski book if he's coming out with a new version. Uh, otherwise, just look on Amazon and look for the good reviews. I'm probably not going to read another book because I went to the, straight to the source for the updates. And here they are. Um, if you want this list available, let me know. I can make it available to individuals as they request it. So you can either leave a comment on the video, but it might take me a couple days to a week to respond. Or you can go to the website and uh, contact me through the contact form. With that said, I wish you all the best in your studies and good luck on the exam. And thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.